distinguished guests on the dais and those seated in the auditorium and friends. You will forgive me if I strike a personal note in my talk today because a lot of thoughts come back to me when I think of Subaru Mama. I first heard about him in the year 1957 when his brother P. V. Krishnamurti stayed in Katak as a neighbor of ours. And the first thing he told me about Subaru was, even my father realized that we had a genius in the family and we didn't quite know what to do with him. And this was saying a great deal because his knowledge of music was something that was almost uncanny. And in a family where all the brothers and sisters have a natural flair for music, and sometimes you get the feeling that they perhaps arrived into this world not crying as babies, but singing a raga and uttering a jati. But even in a family like that, Subaru was considered to be something quite out of the ordinary. I did not meet him till a few years later. And in 1980, when I began writing for the National Herald, I don't know how, there was a Punjabi gentleman there who one day came to me and said, we have seen you on TV interviewing a lot of people and comparing dance shows. Why don't you start writing on dance for us? I said, I've never done that before. If it doesn't matter, ab kuch bhi likh dijiye. So I started writing. And I wrote for about three months, not knowing whether it was being ill or well received, because I had no sort of interaction with anybody. And sometimes I got the feeling that I was writing for the wall. And suddenly, one fine day, the phone rings in our house. And when I pick it up, I hear the voice at the other end, Subudu Peshare. I was absolutely flabbergasted. And why did he ring up? He said, Rumba nanda ma. Keep on. Don't give up. I read your column regularly. To say that you could have knocked me down with a feather wouldn't really be an exaggeration. Now that was the type of person he was. If he saw something that he wanted to praise, he praised it sky high. And if he wanted, if he saw something that he did not approve of, then he also had some very strong words to go with it. And that's one of the things which we always disagreed upon. Because he said, you have to use strong language in your criticism. You're very good otherwise. But why do you write as if you're going to be a diplomat and you're in the diplomatic service? Hit people hard, otherwise they're never going to listen to you. I said, Mama, but we are dealing with people who are so extraordinary. How can you write about them like that? I mean, I may have my opinions, but I can't put it down like that. He said, no, no, you have to be. Praise hard, hit hard. It doesn't matter. That's the only way that people are going to listen to you. And this is something he followed all his life. He didn't just call a spade a spade. He even called it a shovel sometimes. He had a tremendous memory. I remember her him during the season in Madras. He would go from sabha to sabha and he would take in about half a dozen kacheris at least and another couple of shows of dance, all without a pencil or paper in the hand, all in the head. Then one day I asked him, I said, Mama, how do you remember all these things? And he said, you know, I do shirsasan regularly. I have a clear head. There's nothing there. And anything you put in just remains. It doesn't come out. He really had an extraordinary memory. And could we have a person who would sit down and have an argument with the likes of Chambai Vaidyanath Bhagavatar, with Balachandram, with uh, Shammagudi, on a raga, on the intricacies, and here is Subaru who would say that he did not agree with certain un un unorthodox touches in the singing of the raga. 
Nobody could have done that. He was not just an armchair critic. His knowledge was something quite out of the ordinary. And as for his ability to get into the details of the rhythmic part of a recital, that again was absolutely uncanny. They say that the genius for music and arithmetic and mathematics go together. It certainly was true in the case of Subaru. And every time a jaggi was played, he would just keep it counting in his fingers. And in no time he'd say, he'd call somebody and say, half a matra less, please see that you put it right. And invariably he'd be right. I remember once he pointed this out to Yamini and she had to correct herself. It was something absolutely unusual about him. It was just there. Nobody knew what it was. I think Goddess Saraswati had just given it to him. Everybody has been talking about his wit and his humor. That is something out of this world. I mean, when he told me that when he started writing, his editor told him, after your write-up comes out, people should start talking only about the write-up. They should forget the performance. See that you carry this out throughout your writing career. And he did that. Because he wrote it in a style that people only read it. And they forgot about the performance completely. And I remember in Krishnagara Sabha, when I was there a few years back, two people coming out of the Sabha were discussing uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar's Kacheri. And for the first time, apparently, Subhru had mentioned Raga, which he did not see. And they said, how could Subhru make this mistake? And they said, no, 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 no. He must have sung that raga because Subhru is incapable of making a mistake. The discussion went on for a while. And then one of them said, how does it matter ultimately what Ravi Shankar actually played? Because what is going to remain in history is what Subhru has said. And that is going to be the truth. Nobody is going to bother about what actually happened because once Subhru has said it, there is no word that can go beyond that. Now that was the type of man he was. And his witticisms, I mean his punning, he was, one cannot forget the little jokes that he used to come out with all the time. And if he started doing his mimicry, particularly when he started talking about a Bengali Bhadralok or about the man from Kerala, I mean, he could keep you laughing and literally falling off your chair with that kind of laughter, you know, because he was something extraordinary. And I always thought that if he had got taken to acting as a career, he probably would have made a big mark even there. Today we remember this man who was quite out of the ordinary. And no matter what he did, totally fearless because he knew that he knew, number one, and secondly, he had no agenda. He didn't care. And P.V. Krishnamurti told me that when he was working for All India Radio, one day when he was doing a national program, he had to record it. Chambai Vaidhanada Bhagav that was supposed to be singing. And Subaru had come out with his famous thing in the Kalki, Chambai Vastra Baharadam. And he had written about Chambai discarding one piece after another of his clothing. And the last sentence said, Ayu Aditya Kacheri Poharutuka Bayamarke. And uh, P.V. Krishnamurti said he was absolutely aghast. He says, here is this man who didn't have a thought for his younger brother who was working for All India Radio. He knew very well that I was going to be here with him the whole day. And this is the kind of review he comes out with. He says, all day I was running up and down, trying to find nooks and crannies where I could hide this uh, uh, magazine so that uh, Shambhai would not see it. But of course, see it, he did. And then I believe he said, you are so diplomatic. And your brother is so completely without any respect for any of us. Are you sure your brothers? Then he says, I have to tell him that, sir, both of you are geniuses. geniuses. And uh, he knows what he's doing. You know what you are doing. And I, as the younger brother here of one of the geniuses, I hope I'm doing my work correctly. There's nothing else that I can say. So. The papers that he wrote for, the journals that he wrote for, 
gave him total freedom without ever interfering with what he did. Today, when one has to be so politically correct, when one has to keep on noticing about who you have hurt and who you have not hurt, and you have to be doubly careful about every little sentence that you come out with, you're not going to have a writer like that really surviving and living. And how many people, how many geniuses will we get like Subaru, who can come and sit down and argue with the greatest of the great and yet be a writer? I have seen him sometimes sitting beside me. He would shudder when a particular note was sung as if it had touched him deeply inside, as if a vena inside him was playing when he heard that. I mean, that was the kind of rasik he was. We will never get another Subaru. Let us all be happy that we have shared something of what this great man 